everyone. We're, uh, we're going to get started in a, in a minute or two. We're experimenting tonight with uh, live streaming to the universe. Um, so hello, universal people. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me fine through uh, the interwebs. Just to give you a little bit of background for everybody here. Uh, shows about death. Dying. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Um, I asked some people beforehand, uh, since you know, you audience members out in the uh, ether don't know, I asked people kind of what their thoughts are um, on having control over their own death. So I have a bunch of information from them in front of me. And there's more coming. There's cards out there. Anytime you all feel free to just come on up. Give me that card. It's okay. You know, we're processing. <laughs> Thank you. So, I was really close with my grandmother, really, really close. Um, Nani did not edit a single fucking word that came out of her mouth. She hated when I swear. She couldn't stand it. She could really drove her nuts. She came up with her own swears, like uh, Dupala Bupala and Ficola Ficola. Um, but she would swear in Italian. She would say Fungu, which means fuck you all the time, thinking that I didn't know what it was. So she would constantly say, you know, Manja, manja, fungula manja, which means eat, eat, fuck you, eat. Um, and I, I enjoyed that very much. But when she was finally going, it was really the last three years of her life, she was ready. You know, and somebody wrote here, you know, that their, uh, I think it was their nan told them that, you know, they were, they were ready to die, just kind of waiting it out. And some of the people that I met in her assisted living uh, community, I met somebody who was 100. She was just turning 100. I was having lunch with all these ladies. They were really sweet. I said, oh, you're turning 100. She's like, yeah. She was like fucking done. You know? I mean, these were people who were just, it was just like, they're like, I've done everything I, I set out to do that I needed to do, and I'm just ready, you know? But in the last few weeks of my grandmother's life, she was really, really healthy her whole life. She died when she was 95 in hospice. But she had decided to stop taking her medications. She was on 12 prescriptions that were keeping her going. And we watched like people coming in and out of hospice, just like one after another. And she just like was taking up residency on this floor in this one corner room for two weeks while people are just like boom, 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 boom dying out, dying out. And it was really interesting to watch her body, to watch her go into a coma, basically, and just watch her take this long inhalation. And then nothing would happen for like a minute. And then she would like exhale and all of this air would come out and be like, Jesus fucking Christ. Because you think like that's it, she's gone, she's done. No, 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 no. My grandmother's body did turn that off, man. I know, but you did it. You did the wrong one, dude. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's, you know, up, down, all around. We're back. We're back. So, the thing that happened for me that was really intense, there were two things. One, I, and I've talked about this at length in one of my shows, I do a show about my grandmother, um, was that she didn't want to take her Bible with her when she was going into hospice. She didn't want to take her rosary. And this woman was Catholic. Very, she was very, did not understand why I wasn't anymore. Didn't get that I had stopped, that I was done, that I had left. Because when you're Italian, you're Catholic. It's like being Jewish. You're just Jewish, right? But no. When you're Italian, you're Catholic. It's, it's tied together. But it's not, as we all know. But now we're on the wrong. But the priest. 
priest had this conversation with her. My grandmother was on the phone with him, and, he, and she really, really wanted to know why she wasn't dead. She really, she was frustrated. And she was on the phone with him asking him, why am I not dead yet? And all he could say was, you know, the Lord will take you when he's ready, Mary. And she was just like, oh. Because she'd heard that so much. And when you're 95, and you're gonna die, and there's really not much to be done about it, and your body keeps breaking down, like, it's So she didn't really want to hear that. And so I think that had the effect of her not, well, all she wanted were pictures of the family, that's it. But my aunt, my aunt Anna, who has passed since as well, lived right across the hall from my grandmother in this assisted living community. Now my grandmother had known Anna since she was 19 because she married her brother when she was 19. So Anna lived until she was like 94. So I mean, they knew each other really, really well. But she was venomously upset with my grandmother that she had stopped taking her pills. She's like, you're going against what God wants. I'm like, Anna, humans make pills. No. Oh. Oh, they did, they did. I'm learning something new from my aunt. It was really odd. It's really crazy what happens to people in their belief systems. I got on the phone with my aunt because it was just, you know, the, the family it was just me and my, my wife and my aunt and my uncle and my dad, you know. And my great aunt wanted to come and visit my grandmother, but she was like, I mean, she was going into a coma. She wasn't in it yet, but she was going into a coma. And we really wanted to just kind of keep it as this insular family. But my, I got on the phone with my aunt. She's like, Mary won't die because I haven't come there. Where are you coming up with these beliefs? systems. Like, where are you getting it in your head that because you're not here, she won't die, and because she didn't take her pills, she is all of a sudden not going to heaven? And so this leads us to this topic tonight. Now, my grandmother had a really easy death. She went into a coma, she was on morphine, she lasted two weeks, and then she just eventually passed away. But, um, but a lot of people don't have that happen. They're in massive fucking pain. Like awful, no pill can stop it. If you watch the documentary How to Die in Oregon, which I highly suggest, there was a man who got so ill with his particular cancer that it made his eyes bulge and he couldn't close them anymore. So when we're in those situations, he was in Washington State before it passed where you could choose your own death and the time of your death. So we're at this point where there's kind of this big change happening. And so I kind of wonder again why it's going into the political realm. Like what is it about this particular subject that's getting people so riled up? Because if, if you think about it, the Grim Reaper will come towards you when he wants, right? He will come towards you, and then he will step away. He will come towards you and step away. That's how it works. Now, when you think about that, when you think about that Grim Reaper with his hood on, and you can't see his face, a little sickle. I love that word, sickle. He's coming at you, but he's just like, ding, ding. Makes you bleed from the top of your head, it oozes out. Then he just goes away, comes back, into your leg. There's a bunch more blood coming out. Maybe that's a car accident. Maybe that manifests that way. It's I'm a big manifester. Maybe it comes up, ding ding, heart attack. You just, but you're just, you just keep going. And this is a wonderful thing about modern medicine in the Grim Reaper is that the doctors can fight it. Isn't that great? The doctors can just fight it. For so long, we didn't have this ability. We didn't have this on our side. Now we do, and we need to thank the gospel we gave us here. If you think about it, it says it all through the Bible, just a bunch of thou's and shouts and stuff that just lead us to this. If you look at any word in the Bible, 
It's basically telling you, wait to die until Jesus takes you. Every word. I'm a big Bible studier. So I know what I'm talking about. I've got a Twitter account with 50,000 followers. I love scripture. And I like telling people what to do with it. So basically, this is what happens. Your body wants to break down, but then Jesus wants you to stay. And then your body wants to break down, and God says, no. And then the Grim Reaper comes in, they have a little party, and they're having tea, and they're kind of thinking, well, maybe on July 21st, no. Not on the solstice! So um, anyway, like, who are these fuckers who are doing this? They're everywhere. And I kind of, uh, you know, you know, you, if you know me, and a lot of you don't, um, I have a little bit, just that tiny problem with religion, just small. It's you know, kind of microscopic, really. Um, it just, I just, you know, it's because I was raised a particular way. I uh, went into a uh, New Age shitstorm for a long time, uh, thinking that would help, and then came out the other side to realize that um, a better person. <laughs> but one of my favorite things that someone wrote, and I take things out of context a lot, it's really fun. I like surprises. I like surprises, so let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens, right? Say I'm walking down the street, and someone throws a rock in my head, and I fall over, and a car goes over my head, crushes my skull, and my brain just goes flying. That's a cool, that's a surprise. Say I'm on a pogo stick, and I'm just going down the road, and I'm having a great time. And I hit an ice patch, but it's the summer. It's a little bit hot. And I slip, and I fall. I hit my shoulder, which, um, you know, hurts a little bit. But not too much, but I get a staph infection. It goes through my entire arm, and that falls off. Um, they sew another one on, but it's not the same arm. It's a different one. And then, you know, um, I'm just chewing some gum and I choke on it. Surprise. I like surprises. Think about it. There's so many great ways to die that I, I don't know if I necessarily want a choice. I'd rather things happen to me. Because people see death with dignity as suicide. And so we're getting into a rhetoric game again. The estate tax becomes the death tax. Global warming becomes climate change. And this way, everybody on both sides can kind of deal with these phrases in a, in a new way, in a reality that makes sense for them. So we take assisted suicide and we turn it, or euthanasia, and turn it into death with dignity. Not to say that I'm not on board with this at all, because I am, but think about it. When you start messing with language, there's going to be people who point it out like me, um, and, and people on the other side who are basically saying, no, 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 Killing babies with your openness. When that's not the case, that's not what's going on. And we know that's what's not going on, right? But when you change things, when you shift things, when you take that language and you just make it into what you want it to be, it can have a really big difference. I mean, take this for example. One of the major organizations for this, which I think is great, Compassion and choices. Two C words that I personally like. <laughs> Compassion. Very Buddhist. You got your cum. You got your passion. I like it. <laughs> choices. We all like choices. Everybody likes choices. Choices are great. Let's have more choices now. But what about compassionate 
Covenant conservatives. It's just a twist. Do they want dignity with death? I mean, they are compassionate. It gets weird, it just gets strange, like it becomes this battle over what words make sense to who and what they're saying and da 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 da, -da and people holding signs and not holding signs and I'd really like to have a conversation with you, well I'd like to talk some sense into you, that's from the documentary too, I'm just stealing it. <laughs> well you, you know, you could get a cookie cookie, 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 and that's interesting for a little while, right? Do you remember when Ronald Reagan had Alzheimer's and he was at the Republican <coughs> convention and he gave a talk and gave a speech? Does anybody remember this? And he was like, for the Gipper. That's all I said. It was like, for the Gipper. It was like his line from like his campaign back in 1980, which was from a movie he was in. It's like when Schwarzenegger <laughs> went into office when I was living in California, you know, and started using fucking lines from Terminator movies and shit <laughs> to like, to, to win, you know? Like, you know, it's a love you style. He's like, fucking, I remember there's this picture of him in a car going like this. Like, We're going to win! It's just, it's, it's fucking insane. It's insane. So when you think about him, now I just imagine myself with Arnie, just sitting next to his bed, being like, Arnie, okay, Here's the deal, man. It's like, yeah, I can just, you know, make you a little drink, and you can be out of pain, or you can just, you know, do this whole Republican thing. I mean, it's weird. It's like people thinking that they're going against God, which I question. They're going against something bigger than them. And it comes back to suicide again and again and again and again. It's assisted suicide. But then I started thinking this, okay? So someone has a terminal illness, and they are in this really, really difficult position because they're going back and forth with, I don't know, let's say chemotherapy and all these different things. Things are working. A couple months go by, everything's great. And then they were worse off than they were when they started, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It keeps going back and forth, yada, yada, yada. And then they can't they can't be in the position to take their own life because in the state that they live in, they don't have that choice, and so they have to suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer until eventually they pass. But some people would say that that was heroic. That was heroic. I mean, they... It's like I could see, you know, I could see in her eyes that she, um, she wanted to wait until something was ready to take her, you know? I could see it, I could see it in her eyes, like, she wanted, she wanted to wait until, I don't know, how the fuck do you know? How the fuck do you know? I can't see it in her eyes. Okay, that's a song title. Based on a projection. I can see it in your eyes that you love me. La da 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 da. Foo foo fa fa. Okay, maybe you'll sell some records. Good job. Climb the charts. By the way, there are no charts anymore. The charts don't exist. The music industry is dying. Different show. April. <laughs> but how, how do people know? How are people like in that position to know? Like you're supposed to suffer, you're supposed to go through this. It's it's really it's kind of it's it's kind of strange. I mean, it's that whole. I mean, and then I think about growing up and the whole idea. And this is really interesting. This is really fascinating to me that we are born sinners. I love that. I love that. Okay, it's like the greatest miracle is a sin. The most wonderful thing, like, how does it even happen? How does one even get, I mean, then this, this baby goes, oh, 
And that's it. I mean, that's basically it. That's, that's how morals and religion and ethics work. That's it. It's very, we just simplified it. It's very simple. It's like, oh, I agree with you, just like I did. Or, you do! I don't do it! Yeah, it's interesting. 
my cousin's grandmother. Supposedly, we don't know if this is really accurate, but we're pretty sure because she was found um, lying down next to her record player, and the record player, you know, had been going, and so it was at the end, and it kept like kind of skipping. So they were thinking that she was dancing, and she and she like had a heart attack and fell over and died, which is actually what she said is the way that she liked to go. I want to go dancing. I just want to be dancing and then just... Imagine that. I don't know if it really happened, but I mean, that's a nice story for tonight. That's all you're getting. That's it. That's it. And it comes back to suicide. Isn't that, but it's really, you know what's really odd as well within the framework of this is in some cultures, for example, in Japan, there are moments where someone has done something that has you know, dishonored somebody else in such a way that the only way to get out of it is to kill yourself. Now, I mean, Japan, Japan is much more modern than it was, da, 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 but you know, that's what people would do. There, just, there wasn't a choice. And so the honorable thing to do would be to go out, you know, hari kari, and and that was, seen, that was seen as this a dignified thing. So it's interesting to me, again, like what does dignity even mean? Because when we start to talk about these words, we start to get into the minutia of what those things mean to us. You know what I think about compassion. So what, what do we think about dignity now? Like what do we think about that word? Where do all of us fit into that? Because a lot of people might think that that is, you know, kind of a, a king's approach. You know, it's kind of, you're, you're dignified. You are, you know, you're, I don't know, I'm sitting straight right now. Because I think that's dignified. So I was a little punched. But now, I'm, I'm, you know, and now I have to tell you, I would be ready to go like this. Nice straight posture. Okay? All right? I had some chips earlier. They were pretty good. Thanks, Riffs. Good salsa. Um, you know, I made a mistake. That feels great. Um, big mistake. Live. Recorded. Um, so that feels good. Um, you know, I'm sweating in all the right places. Down there. Um, so, I feel like I've, I've had the human experience. I'm not afraid of death. I don't believe you. It's an interesting thing. When people say that they're not afraid of death, I wonder what they're saying. Are they saying that they're not afraid of the part where you're like, then gone? Or what about all the stuff that leads up to it? That tends to be the, you know, that's why we need more surprises like we were talking about before, right? Where this just kind of hits me in the head, the bulb goes into my eye, sticks something in there, right? The stuff starts to come out of my nose. Somebody freaks out, they yell, and that yell is like, ah, gives me a stroke and I die. <laughs> I must say I would be afraid once that starts falling. But the scream would probably remind me of a really good metal song that I like and that I used to be out. This one's long. I think I would want control in curtain certain situations, but don't know if I would be able to take that take that control. It seems so terrifying, I think, because particularly I've always had trouble with that word. Particularly. With how laws are generally written, this would mean dying. But yeah, I do. Preferably while eating gelato. <laughs> we have another person who's very interested in getting a pizza and watching Gilligan's Island. So I think we're on to something here. We are. We're on to something here. And the thing is, is that we, we have to decide whether what kind of food <laughs> products we want when we're going. Okay? And what we need to do is eat those each day. Because we never know. So this is my advice. It's for you, green car gelato person, to get some gelato and eat that. And keep it in your car. I want you to get a nice ice cooler. 
nice cooler, bring it everywhere you go, especially on those hot days, right? It's like 105 outside, you gotta get one of those ones that really can do the job. Because um, you know, you're gonna be out in the desert during Burning Man. Anything, anything can happen out there. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen pictures. Lots of weird people tied up doing stuff. And imagine eating gelato off of them and then just passing out from heat stroke and dying. You could do that. It's a little. Right? And for you, going with them, Mr. or Mrs. or whatever pronoun you prefer, Gilligan's Island. Um, so now you're going to need to get the DVD set, right? You're going to need to basically, you know, download that, have that accessible on your phone. I suggest also having it on an iPod. That, that way, you know, in case, you know, you are at Burning Man with your friend who's licking gelato off the naked person's genitals, that you, um, that you have the ability to be able to watch it, you know, just as like, you know, just as they're falling and you're going to catch them and they hit their head against yours and then, boom, in the sand, like an ostrich. This is what's going to happen. I'm just telling you what's happening. I'm just giving you situations and circumstances that could potentially lead to your certain demise. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm, I'm trying to help you guys out. And I wonder about free will. We talk about free will a lot. You know, there's so many people in so many countries and situations that don't have that ability, that don't have freedom, that are very constricted by religious circumstances, cultural circumstances, etc., etc., etc. And so if we are a society that is constantly talking about free will and having bands like Devo create songs called Free Will, which I is a banger. Shouldn't we then carry that over into our choice around dying? It's weird. It's like, no, oh, yeah. Not taking my guns. So people, you know, I mean, okay, I don't want your gun. Anyway, dude, I'll keep your gun. It's like, but you're gonna die in a hospital. I mean, that's weird. That's weird. You know what I mean? There's a disconnect. I'm not taking your gun. Please let me die on my own terms. No! But if you come on my property, I'm gonna kill you. It's like, it's really fucked up. It's really fucked up. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. There's, I don't know who this person is, here, and I, I doubt they're here. They might, they might be here, I'm not sure. If, if so, we can have a conversation. I'm sorry to shout, you know, call you out, but it's like, you, you know, you're driving around in a truck in East Hampton, and on the back of your truck is this thing that says, uh, you better bring yours when you come to take mine. It's got pictures of guns, and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I don't want to go to your potluck. Like, I have no interest in, you know, sharing potato salad or really anything with you. So it, it's just kind of like, I mean, you know, people make these state they make these statements. But like, what would the statement be around this? I mean, I guess it was like, you're, a, you're a, a suicide person. Like, I don't know, like, what would it be? What would it be? Like, you're, you love killing yourself. Like, what is that? What, what, what is it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that, they, that they're there, that they've already created these things, and I just haven't done enough research to, d to dig into this. Um, but it just, it's kind of, it just becomes kind of ridiculous to me. Even that. I think I've just, I mean, I've done that. Become a bird. <laughs> and just like, you know, done the fucking rooster thing. <laughs> to people. Just like, you know. I don't like that dish. You don't like any PR? <laughs> Did my little plug. It's like, you know, it's just like people, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, I've had, you know, This was an interesting one. I was at I was at um, Thanksgiving, I believe, or Christmas, with my my family, and uh, my cousin used to be married to this guy, who was yeah, very nice guy, 
very loving to his kids. I could totally see that. Real sweet guy. Very conservative guy. And he really liked messing with me. He said, well, Seth, what do you think about this? Why don't we, um, uh, why don't we inject AIDS into all these, like, guys on death row and do experiments on them to find a cure? Why don't we do that? Somebody, what's interesting is the mindset of that correlating with, but you can't have control over how you die. But I'll have control over how these people die, or it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it also, it also like goes to, to, to war, where people are going off to war, and just being in these battles, etc., etc., etc. And like, what does that mean? And like, they're coming back, and they died, and they're heroes, or they're not heroes, or they're blowing these people up, and then there's like, just, there's so, it's just, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. The fact of the matter is, and I think we're all aware of this, each one of us is going to die. We're all, everybody, every, even maybe together. Wouldn't that be fun? This is it. Like right after this, you walk out and the whole building just falls. This was it. Enjoy. Because this is it. Just imagine that. They're like, I'm going to go to the highway and get a drink. No, you're not. You're building balls. And as you walk in, boom. Gone. Dead. This part stays, by the way. This part's fine. So anybody left in here is good. And everybody who's leaving just collapses. No, no, no. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm just trying to give you options. I'm just trying to lay it out. If you still have breath, you still have a purpose here. <laughs> what if you don't? Steven Seagal said to me, and he said to a lot of other people, when he was recognized as a Tolku Lama, something or other fucking thing, from some Buddhist guy, which was a big mistake, because now this guy's already thinking what he's thinking. And he comes and he's in a keto demonstration in class at Naropa. Really weird. Okay? Really weird. It's pretty weird already. It's getting stranger. And I'm pointing, I'm pointing, I'm pointing a microphone. It's called a shotgun mic that looks like a gun. So I'm pointing something that looks like a gun at Steven Seagal. So as he's talking, we can hear him. So I'm doing this and I had to go to his, I was asked, I was asked to go to his uh, bodyguard guys who can't put their arms next to their, can't do that, gotta do this. And I said, by the way, I had to say, oh, I just was supposed to tell you that this is a shotgun mic. He's like, yeah, I know that, it's a shotgun there. But, you know, somebody said, Mr. Seagal, when you are, when you're like in the middle of throwing somebody, how do you breathe? Kind of 
hanging out. That's weird too. Why would anyone cut off their fucking head and put it in a freezer? <laughs> so that maybe, once they figure out how to give him a body that's Disney-like, what is that, I don't know, that they can like sew it back on, or like wake him back up and be like, by the way, we got CGI now, like what, like what? <laughs> Like, what the, like, what? <laughs> we need to end. So, I'll end with this card. Death. The end. Get yo house in order. It does say yo. Postpone it with kale. really needs to give the gelato and pizza people a lesson in how to eat a little bit healthy while we're going to our fall from grace into the death place. So yeah, enjoy it, this, because it's, right? So jerk it, jill it, Jack and Jill go up the hill and do their thing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thanks.